this gorilla looks like my dog. Like my dog as a baby what? had like a baboon gorilla type little face and it was so cute. So I'm gonna name this gorilla Gus Gus number two. Also, if I brought my dog in here, he'd be terrified. This is like a haunted house for him. It's gonna blink again, I think. Oh, is he? Uh, you see, it blinks. We are back and we are in a New Jersey shopping mall, which is basically Times Square for me. And we are finally at Rainforest Cafe. It is my 90s dreams just taking place right now. We're about to try all the appetizers, all the seafood, steak, sandwiches, burgers, desserts, cocktails, daiquiris. We're about to be in a rainforest in New Jersey in a shopping mall. There's gonna be rain, there's gonna be fog, there's gonna be a whole thunderstorm, animals and birds chirping. You're just gonna have to see it to understand and like feel it. Ready? Yeah? Okay. Our adventure begins here. Stunning, gorgeous. It's giving Margaritaville in a rainforest. Yeah. What we're gonna start with is the Corona Rita. It's a frozen margarita topped with a Corona Rita Extra, and you can do original, blue, or strawberry. I like that it's original, strawberry, which is a flavor, and then blue, which is a color. If you've never had a Corona Rita, it's like you get usually a frozen margarita or a regular margarita, you get your little baby bottle Corona, and you can either just keep drinking and with the pressure, the Corona will start coming out more, or if you wanna be really, really reckless, you can start just pouring a little bit of it in. Oh God, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a really, really salty margarita. Do I put the whole thing in? I, or do you wanna drink it? What if I take it out and whip it so then you can drink out of it? Do you actually think that you're not gonna make a mess? I don't know. Ready? Oh God. <gasps> yeah. Can I just? Yes. Yeah. We have the chili con queso. We added the seasoned ground beef to it, which is an extra $4.99. It kind of looks like one of those nacho cheeses that you get at a sports game or the movie theater, wherever you like to get your chili. You hear that? There's a bird around us somewhere. I regret to inform you that the chili cheese is far too pepper forward for me. I do not like pepper. Oh, is it happening? We are in a rainforest and there's a thunderstorm currently happening. This happens every 17 to 20 minutes at all, all hours. So three times an hour you have this happening. Okay, I was talking about the chili con queso before the thunderstorm interrupted us. And I just wanted to say that one, the ground beef isn't adding too much of a flavor to it. I don't know if it's worth the extra $4.99. It's very, very green bell pepper forward. I'm not a bell pepper girl, so it's not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna move on to something that maybe will make me feel a little bit happier. We have the beef lava nachos, peppers, onions, black beans, Monterey Jack cheese, cheddar cheese, green onions, sour cream, Pico de gallo and salsa. It is, ooh, bountiful. Okay, I'm gonna get sour cream in this. Look at that. Ooh, oh God, okay. The cilantro and the salsa really up the ante on these. And the salsa is really powerful and pun. Oh my God. Is it annoying? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just gonna talk through that. Wow. Oh no, we're going down really fast. The beef lava nachos. This is the perfect thing when you have a huge party. Like you need to have like five to six people. There's enough for everyone. Are you sure that's not too loud? Perfect thing for five to six people. Great for sharing. We have the chicken quesadilla. Cajun chicken, Monterey Jack cheese, cheddar cheese, and pico de gallo. Okay, sour cream. Salsa, it looks like the same exact salsa from the nachos. It doesn't need the salsa for this one. I'm not tasting too much of a Cajun chicken, but the chicken is extra juicy, extra moist. I would say the quesadilla is also <laughs> extremely shiny to the touch. Um, I would say this is like kind of like a hangover quesadilla in my mind, but perfect for sharing. 
I think you could honestly have one piece each and then get something else as an appetizer. But if you want to split between three people, that's perfect. Or even make this a meal. I mean, this whole thing could be your entire dinner. But I think we're gonna find something better for dinner. We're gonna do the mozzarella flatbread with arugula, which is very fancy. It has marinara sauce, mozzarella cheese, arugula, tomato, shaved parm salad, and a balsamic glaze. Ooh, those thick pieces of parm. This is my favorite so far. Easy. I want way more of that parm on there because adding just that right bit of like the salty umami bit that you want, the balsamic is just kind of brightening it up. Arugula has a little bit of pepperiness. I would naturally gravitate towards the beef lava nachos, but this is far superior. This is delicious. This is something I would expect at like a really nice Italian restaurant as an app. Wait, should I have the drink first before we go to the, flat, the last flatbread? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I can't remember what drink this is. I think it must be the rainbow colada. So this must be spiced rum, strawberries, bananas, pina colada mix, and pineapple juice. Ding, ding, ding. It's just really banana forward. That is a banana drink. Oh, it says New Jersey on it. Do you think they'll let me take this cup home? Maybe. I think you're allowed to take some of your cups home anyways. Buy the drink, keep the glass, $14. I'm keeping the glass. Last thing of this round, the shrimp scampi flatbread, Alfredo sauce, mozzarella cheese, red onions, red pepper flakes, and green onions. That has the makings to be my favorite thing. It has all my favorite flavors. I'm going to say there is not much shrimp on this. There is one piece of shrimp per bite. Maybe it doesn't need much. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. It smells like shrimp scampi pasta. Oh. If you love your pasta and you love that kind of creamy Alfredo sauce, this is definitely winning. However, if that kind of throws you off, it's gonna feel too heavy for you, you definitely have to go with the balsamic flatbread. That one with the, with the cheese on it, I would just ask for a few extra pieces of cheese and you're in business. Hallelujah. As far as the drinks go, you gotta go with the Corona Rita. It's just such a fun drink to have and you get your own little beer on the side which you can give your camera person because you come to Rainforest Cafe with a camera person too. Mm -hmm. We are in the seafood round. We see the food in front of us. That was a really bad pun. That was so Cut. bad. Cut it, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have the Aloha Salmon and Shrimp. It's a Hawaiian glaze over it with seasonal vegetables and jasmine rice. It doesn't describe the sauce though. It just says Hawaiian glaze. Hawaiian glaze can mean many things. Really buttery. Why is it soft? Maybe it has some sort of pineapple base, but I'm also, I don't know why I'm tasting macadamia nut in here, but it's like something nutty. It's a super buttery, tangy, Adriana would say zesty sauce. I'm gonna try one of the shrimp. Ooh, it's sticky. The shrimp is actually sticky, like candied. Ooh, it tastes like it just came off the grill. I love this. This is, this is hitting the spot. We have the jungle steak and shrimp. We have sirloin steak, shrimp scampi, Caribbean coconut shrimp, and seasonal veggies. No, <laughs> it smells so salty. It was cooked well done, which I'm more of a medium rare girl. But the flavor in here, it's the butter. It's like a Cajun butter flavor, which is interesting because it seems like we have like Cajun, then we have Mexican, then we have Hawaiian. It's like we have all these different cultural flavors on one table at one time. Let's do the shrimp scampi real quick. And shrimp scampi on the same, on the same plate. What's happening here? This actually looks just like red lobster shrimp scampi, even like the little boat that's coming in. Oh, it's so buttery. Okay, here we go. Lemon, butter, garlic, basil. You can't go wrong. Extra crunchy. You actually can't taste too much of the coconut because it is toasted so much. The coconut flavor has kind of come out of it. For me, the jelly, anything that has more of that ginger flavor ends up tasting more like 
medicinal slash perfume like to me. It's something that just as soon as I taste it, I know I'm not gonna like it. If you really love your ginger, I think you'll really enjoy the flavor, but for me, it's just like, it takes away from everything else. Wait, I have a fun, can I do? Yeah. Rainforest Cafe has about 17 locations nationwide and then a few global locations. One thing that all of the Rainforest Cafes used to have were live animals. I'm not talking about live animals, I'm talking mainly about birds, parrots. It was all part of like, they had an educational program that came in as well. The birds used to cost each, every single restaurant, $100,000 each year to have, to have the birds in the restaurant. If you had the parrots, I believe there was even like a photo op option where you could have it on your shoulder, you could learn about them. They were around the restaurant. Um, they stopped doing that. <laughs> um, when was that? In the early 2000s, I believe. There are no more. There are no live animals at any Rainforest Cafe. I'm not done with my fun fact. You can still get live birds in Anaheim at Disneyland because it was written into the contract when they got new owners that that location specifically must always have birds. We have the Caribbean coconut fried shrimp. We have coleslaw, plum sauce, and safari fries. It does actually have a lot of the flavors of a plum sauce, which is like peach, apricot, ginger, a little bit of vinegar. It, it's just a little too strong. I think it overpowers whatever you're eating. The shrimp itself though, yeah. I love when they're flattened like this. They look like little hovercrafts. It's like doo -doo 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 -doo. It's like a shrimp potato chip, but a sweet one. I would just do something outside of the plum sauce. That's my main, that's my main qualm. Now that we just went through a really horrible thunderstorm, let's drink a hurricane. A typical hurricane has light rum, dark rum, lime juice, orange juice, passion fruit puree, simple syrup, and grenadine. I can't drink it. Okay, a hurricane is so fun to drink. It is layers upon layers of very sweet, fruity things on top of each other. I can't, ha it smells like a hangover for me th at this point in my life, but here, do you wanna try it and see? I, I can't give a fair review because of my life, because of the mistakes I have made. Is it also tasting like a hangover to you? That would give you the worst hangover of your entire Oh, it does. If you've never had a hurricane, you should definitely try it. But you once you've had it, you can't, like the first time you have it, you're like, this is amazing. And you drink a lot of it. And then you're like, that was a horrible choice. Up next, we have the fish and chips, which is served English style coleslaw with safari fries. These are good fish and chips. I don't even have to eat it and I can tell you these are good. You know why? Because it's extra crispy and when the fish comes out, it doesn't fully slip out and you can see the moistness of it still on the inside. That on its own, we shouldn't even have to try it, but I will. This is like all faithful to me. Uh, I could just eat the skin of fish and chips and be so happy, so content for the rest of my life. I'm gonna do a little bit of the coleslaw just because they gave us like a mountain of it. It has that right, the right amount of tang in here. Like it's like they use like a tangy mustard and maybe just a little bit of vinegar. We haven't had their fries yet. They're really gorgeously seasoned. It's probably their own kind of like, what do you think they call it? Like a tropical seasoning or like a rainforest seasoning but it really looks like kind of like an old bay to me. But let's see. Ooh, I don't know if I'm supposed to dip it in the, whatever. It's like an extra salty Cajun seasoning. It's a very pillowy French fry, but it's fried just the right amount on the outside. It's honestly, these are made for malt vinegar. That's what this is. Like you get the fish and chips, you add your malt vinegar, you have a great time. Shrimp tacos, fried shrimp, jalapeno ranch, red cabbage, citrus vinaigrette, pico de gallo, and black beans. I kind of have high expectations for this one. Let's see. It just needs more of a dressing, needs more of a sauce on it. It's a pretty dry taco. All the flavors are there. The cabbage, the shrimp, it's all making sense, but it just needs that jalapeno ranch drizzled all the way on top or an extra crema. Just needs a little oomph to it to really take it over the edge. Favorites of this round. What did I, oh, it's the salmon. The salmon and the shrimp. Oh, so delicious. That sauce is the right amount of buttery. Like I want to taste it again. That one just makes me happy. It's like a buttery, fruity sauce. It's a little bit of extra zesty. 
it's just done, it's really done right. I love, love that. Just can't go wrong. Ready? Next yeah. round? Can you hear it? Yeah. We have the Amazon fajitas, grilled onions, bell peppers, sour cream, guacamole, lettuce, cheddar, Monterey Jack cheese, pico de gallo, Caribbean rice, black beans, flour tortillas, chicken, beef. I'm actually gonna really just make this one bountiful. We need sour cream and cheese. Mm-hmm. This steak is cooked way better than the steak we had last round. And seasoned perfectly? What the heck are you? The chicken is a little too dry for me. I would just get the steak. The steak is incredible. It's juicy, well-cooked, flavorful. It goes perfectly with the amount of cheese and guac. It's just like the right amount of filling that you want. Stir fry time. Korean spicy stir fry. Chicken, broccoli, carrots, Korean sauce, mandarin oranges, peppers, crispy wontons, red cabbage, green onions, sesame seeds, and jasmine rice. We are mixing. I can't let anything be beautiful. Get mandarin, some brock, and chicken maybe in a bite. That feels like the right, that has a good amount of mix of flavors. It's like an orange chili based sauce. Ooh, it's really heating me up. On a cold day, if you need something to just warm you up and warm your soul up, this is gonna do it for you. I need, yeah, I need that. We're gonna cool ourselves off with the Blue Nile. This is mango rum, blue curacao, blood orange sour, and then sweet and sour. I'm really excited about the blood orange in here. But the mango rum, you know how I feel about rum. I don't know why we go to so many tropical restaurants when I always say I don't like rum. Orange lime Gatorade. It tastes like I, I'm trying to replenish my electrolytes, but I'm also putting rum in it. Like, I don't know who I wanna be. I wanna be like a boozy athlete. We have the top sirloin. Sirloin steak, red skinned mashed potatoes, and seasonal veggies. We're about to have a little bit of a classy steakhouse experience in the rainforest. It smells buttery. Who would guess? It's the Cajun butter again. Now we need to try the mashed potatoes. Chelsea was eyeing me. She was like, I just want the mashed potatoes. Are you a mashed potato girl? Yes. I'll do mashed potatoes over fries. Depending on the fry, I too will do mashed potatoes over it. These are so wonderfully whipped and fluffy and buttery. They're, I don't, you can't even see the butter in here, but wow, these are, these are my ideal Thanksgiving type mashed potatoes. We have the Moho Bones. <laughs> this is a half rack of St. Louis style pork spare ribs, smoking mocho slash moho barbecue sauce, coleslaw, and safari fries. Okay, well, whatever way you say it. It should be citrusy, a uh, citrusy garlicky marinade that has a slightly sour flavor to it. Let's see if that's true. Okay, this is so large and in charge. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> the whole thing. Mm hmm I don't know if I taste garlic per se. I definitely get the citrusy, like almost like an orange based barbecue sauce. There's just like the meat has just perfectly melted with the with the fat, making it You know what? <laughs> Why are the elephants judging me so hard? I swear they're making fun of me. My favorites are, you're either gonna get the steak fajitas. You don't need to get the steak and chicken, just the steak fajitas, or you're getting the ribs. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> we are in the pasta and sandwich round. Do you wanna do burgers or pasta first? We have equal amounts of both. Burgers in front of you, and we haven't done a slow mo, so. Yay! Did you even get a bite? No! We just went to Fuddruckers. Their burger wasn't this big. This is huge. Usually, when you have a double patty, 
the patties are thinner. These patties are both equally thick. The burger is extremely salty, extremely just buttery and fatty. It's really like, it's, it's a delicious, it's a damn good burger. I'm just like, I, I, I want another bite and I just told you how full I was. I f with this. What was this even called? The Beastly Burger? You wanna go to a, maybe a more approachable burger? Sure. I say that and this one's also gonna be, this one feels heavier. Oh dear. Okay, we have the pulled pork burger. It is a burger patty with barbecue pulled pork, coleslaw, crispy fried onions. Yeah. You see that? All that coleslaw in there. Uh, point to the light. Like that, can you see that? Mm. That looks beautiful. The crispy fried onions in here, delicious. Adding a really great crunch. The pulled pork is, it tastes like it's ketchup based. Fried onions and coleslaw, yes. The pulled pork, mm, not my favorite. I'm gonna go with the Beastly Burger over this burger any day. This one, I would, oh I just, I'm just like slammed my hand on it. This one, gorgeous, beautiful. We have Iggy's Piggy Sandwich, slow cooked Cuban style pork, sliced ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and a Creole mustard. I love Cuban sandwiches so much. It's my favorite combo. Just has the right amount of vinegariness going on and acidity. A very similar note that we had to the tacos is, is what I'm gonna say with this one. It needs a little bit more sauce going on or the ciabatta needs to be like toasted like a panini so it's like really melty. There's just something about it that's a little too dry for my taste buds. It just needs a, either more cheese, more sauce, or just needs to be grilled and like panini pressed down so that it's all like melting together a little bit more. I mean, I just also think that this burger keeps overshadowing everything else that I'm eating on this table. I'm just trying to find something that's gonna beat it. We're gonna do a little bit of a drink break. Palate cleanser, and can I do my really long-winded fun fact? Story time with Julia. Okay, buckle up everyone. Let's have a chat about how did Rainforest Cafe even happen? Steven Schussler. Schussler? Schussler. I should have fact checked that part. Sorry, Steven. However you pronounce your last name. This man used to work in advertising and in around 1990, he had a really great idea of creating a Rainforest Cafe. But before he just kind of pitched it to anyone, he decided to empty out his entire home and take that home and bring in fish tanks, live animals, flora and fauna. He used over 3,700 extension cords to make it happen. This man built, took his house and turned it into an actual rainforest. And he used so many extension cords and used so much electricity. He had the highest electricity bill in Minnesota's history for a residential like home. His electricity bill was so high and his neighbors were so confused on what was going on because they just kept seeing all these lights on and like it looked literally like a rainforest in his house. They were kind of like, is he selling drugs? So they actually had the DEA come to his house and investigate only to see it's like, no, this man just really is passionate about creating a rainforest cafe. <laughs> he had, where is it? 40 birds, some turtles and a baboon in his home. A straight up baboon. A baboon in his home. So it took him three years to complete his home and to show to investors. And it, he thought, if you build it, they shall come. That wasn't quite the case. It actually took a little bit more time than he expected. Finally, he got someone interested in it and he opened up his very first real rainforest cafe, not inside his house, in 1994 in the Mall of America. And that is the original location that still exists to this day. Oh, he also had butterflies. He had a ton of butterflies in his house. It, I don't know. He's a, he, he had a, he had a different brain than all of us. We have the Dragonberry Mule. That's Dragonberry Rum, Elderflower Liqueur, Strawberry Puree, Lime Juice, and Ginger Beer. I love Elderflower so much. It's like a little bit like a pear flavor. Mules should be refreshing, and this one is no different than the rest of them. It is refreshing, it is freezing cold in the copper cup. 
It might not be the most decorative drink that we've had, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It's simple, it's easy, it's not overpowering in any way, and I feel like you could have a few of these and not feel like you're gonna have like a sugar hangover. This is the Creole mac and cheese. We have shrimp, and dewy sausage, peppers, red onion, cheese sauce, chili butter breadcrumbs, and penne sauce. Chili butter breadcrumbs? Sounds fantastic. Okay, one more bite. She's cheesy. Oh, uh-huh. It has that right amount of the cheesy creaminess, but then it has the crunchy topping on it. So it's not just one note. Oh, okay, grab your fork, grab your fork. Oh, is that a piece of shrimp in yours? You got a piece of shrimp. I can't focus, I don't have It's food. okay. Wow, lucky. I wanna find a shrimp. Oh, oh, it's really tender. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like the shrimp in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this is doing it for me. Do you feel like Rasta Pasta looks different in other places? I feel like this doesn't look like Rasta Pasta. It doesn't. But, okay, it says it's Rasta Pasta. So this is sauteed chicken, broccoli, red peppers, spinach, garlic, and penne pasta. Oh, okay, so you have a choice of pesto or Alfredo sauce. I think it just needs a name change and then it's fine. It's delicious. Final pasta of the round. We have the pasalaya. It is shrimp, sauteed chicken, bell peppers, onions, tomatoes, and dewy sausage, hot and spicy Cajun sauce with linguine. At first it almost looked like a lo mein to me because of all of these on here too. Oh, 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 look at that sauciness. Okay, now it's hitting the spiciness. Oh, <laughs> spicy! Okay, it's a really sharp spice. It, it makes you think that everything's fine for about three seconds and then it's like, it like takes the dagger and hits you. Ooh, it's all over the tongue. As much as I'm wincing through the heat, I do really, really like it. So I'm thinking the shrimp will be a little bit less spicy than the andouille. Okay, maybe it's the Indu. Ooh, nope, there, now it's sitting. To me, spicy food wakes me up and just makes me feel like really energized. So I really enjoy this. However, if I want something that's not putting me through like mild to moderate pain, I'll probably go with the Cajun, or wait, was it called Cajun pasta? No, it's the Creole mac and cheese. Okay, what you need to do is have like three of you and you order the mac and cheese and the beastly burger and you split it amongst three people because even amongst two people, it's too much food. But the combination of those two together is like, it is, it's gonna be a brick and it might be the only thing you eat that day, but you will be satisfied. You will be incredibly satisfied. Do you even have room for dessert round? Oh no, I have had no room for this round and I went in for double bites. We're doing There's, it, we are going. I am pregnant with a Rainforest Cafe baby. The New Jersey Rainforest Cafe, baby. We have the Sparkling Volcano, which on every single table, you get a little advertisement for it because it is one of the most iconic things you can order here. A giant rich chocolate brownie stacked up high, served warm with vanilla ice cream, creamy whipped topping, caramel, and chocolate sauces. Also, I should let you know that one, it's $18.99. It is the most expensive dessert you can get here. And it used to come with an actual sparkler and with a whole entire show, but I imagine there were some fire issues and children with sparklers don't really go well together. So instead you get this, which I kind of like more because I feel like I get to take it home. Oh, oh, I'm taking out all the foundation. Oh, okay, here we go. What? Oh, oh, it is a brownie cake. There, is that caramel in the middle of it? Uh, Are we kidding? Like, Should I try from the top? I feel like if I take from the top, it's gonna fall immediately. Do it, live this on the edge. girl is on. Oh, oh, wow. See, just like Jenga, you never know what's about to happen. Okay. Wow. Ooh, this is fun. I like this just for the experience. I'm having a good time. Alrighty, here we go. Oh my gosh, I have so much chocolate on here. <laughs> that, okay, that looks like frozen Cool Whip. This looks like ice cream. Whoa, so the top two 
big old balls of the, what I thought were ice cream were just frozen balls of whipped cream. Outside of the spectacle of it all, this is worth it because, let's see, so it said $18.99. Each, there's three separate slices of brownie cake on here. So even for three people, that's a really great deal. But you can split this between probably six people and that's a lot that you're getting here. <gasps> is there brownie on the bottom too? Are we kidding? This is definitely what you get for your birthday or celebration. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, well I'm gonna have the island daiquiri, which is a pina colada. Standard pina colada. I wanted this for the dessert round because I feel like these always kind of feel like a fruity, boozy milkshake to me. It's beautiful, it's iconic. I've never been able to go wrong with pina colada. It always just hits the spot. It has the right amount of pineapple to coconut ratio. I like a little bit more pineapple than I do the coconut. So it makes it just a slightly, a little bit more tart, which is what this is giving me. This will also give you a massive brain freeze. I can feel it coming on. Speaking of brain freeze, Go. The next one? Yep. Oh God. This is the Brazilian freeze, AKA a strawberry daiquiri. Yeah, it's like a strawberry smoothie, juice, frozen blended thing with Greek yogurt added to it. It has just the right amount of, oh God, brain freeze. And it's just the right amount of brain freeze for you. Oh, ow. This is extremely chuggable. I mean, obviously you can add your alcohol to it, add some rum to it, but I actually really enjoy it on its own. It's just like a strawberry milkshake that has a little bit more of a fruity base than an ice cream base to it. It's, are they agreeing with me or are they disagreeing? We have the tribal cheesecake. It's a New York style cheesecake, creamy whipped topping, raspberry and chocolate sauces. There's nothing tribal about this. They just put the word tribal in the name. Um, it does have a fun little zigzag stripey pattern going on over here. It looks like there's extremely paper thin, like almost as thin as my nail of graham cracker going on in there. Okay. And this looks like, it, this looks like actual Philadelphia cream cheese that is slightly tinted yellow. Philadelphia cream cheese used to sell these little cream cheese cakes, like um, cheesecake cakes. And they had a little like stripe of fruit in the middle and it had a little zigzag on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. It has the exact same texture. This definitely tastes like it's, it, I hope that they do use Philadelphia cream cheese because it tastes like it. So thick and creamy. The way that it all kind of, it's like not, it's not dry at all. Look it's at a, that. it's a fleecy cheesecake. I love fleecy cheesecakes. We have our key lime pie with raspberry sauce and look at this graham cracker crust. This one's extremely tart. Ooh. Oh man, that's like a lime curd in there. If you do not like sour things, if you don't like that puckering feeling, do not get this. I think we're in the most popular section where the elephants are. I think the elephants are the star of the show here. They all wanna meet the elephant. It's really cute. That is actually one thing, this is actually part of a fun fact that I didn't really get into, but Rainforest Cafe actually works with conservation funds and they do a lot of educational programs. So when you come here, it's not just like save the rainforest just really cutely on the waterfall over there. They actually do walk the walk and talk the talk. I'm gonna say that the sparkling volcano is a really great option when you're splitting with a huge group of people. The key lime pie, I just love anything that's really sour. So I'm gonna be very partial to the key lime pie. When it comes to the drinks, maybe I would choose a drink as my ending thing versus a dessert because I really enjoyed both of these. Like the, a pina colada versus a daiquiri. I feel like I'm not in a mall right now and I'm on a vacation. And I just enjoy this. But if you're not, you know, feeling like you need to put another drink in your stomach, the volcano is such a fun time. Honestly, this has been the time of my life. Before we roll out of here, we need to go into the store and see if we can get ourselves Cha-Cha the Frog and if we can get ourselves a little keychain. I didn't even show you Cha-Cha the Frog. 
Do you want a big one or a small one? I don't. Oh no. <gasps> Look. Do 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 do. I'm Cha Cha the Frog. One second. We're not done yet. Where? I have to get you a keychain.